Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're talking about the song Good Vibrations, in particular the theremin type sound in the middle of that song. We're going to imitate it here on our Nord Stage 3 using the synth engine. This request actually comes from Joris in Belgium. Thanks for the great series. Wouldn't it be a great recurrent item to present ways of reproducing famous sounds from big songs on Nord keyboards? Yes, we are actually doing that. It's called the Discovery Series. In fact, I'll put a link up here in the card window so that you can check out that playlist and just check out all the different famous sounds we've made here, mostly with the Nord Stage 3 and a little bit of the Electro 6 along the way. He says, as the first challenge, I think the theremin in good vibrations would be a good one. And cheers from Belgium. So thank you very much for that request. And it turns out that this particular sound is fairly straightforward and easy to imitate. And you essentially you start with a sine wave and move on from there. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Let's quickly talk about the theremin. Technically speaking now, in the research that I've done, the theremin was not actually used on good vibrations. Aww. Although many, many people think that that's exactly what it was. It's sort of a cousin to that instrument. Now the original instrument was created by Leon Theremin. Here we see him playing his own instrument. And then Moog created this thing called the Ether Wave, assembled from a theremin kit. There's all kinds of interesting things in lore around this particular instrument, and today you can still purchase a theremin, and it's got a lot more features than the original ones. And what makes the theremin unique, other than the way that it sounds, is that you are literally playing it in thin air using the antenna, and as you move your hands, whether you vibrate and move up and down, left and right, in that X, Y, Z plane, you will make the sound and the tones based on where you position your hands. One hand is the volume, the other hand is the pitch. So that's how the theremin works. But it turns out when you go to Wikipedia and you look up theremin and then you look up good vibrations, and we learn this. The Beach Boys' 1966 single, Good Vibrations, though it does not technically contain a theremin, is the most frequently cited example of the instrument in pop music. The song actually features a similar sounding instrument invented by Paul Tanner, called the Electro Theremin. Then the instrument features a tone and portamento similar to that of the theremin, but with a different control mechanism. It consisted of a sine wave generator with a knob that controlled the pitch placed inside a wooden box. The pitch knob was attached to a slider on the outside of the box with some string. The player would move the slider, thus turning the knob to the desired frequency with the help of markings drawn on the box. So it was a little bit more precise than a theremin. Yeah, so the instrument was custom built at Tanner's request. Tanner appreciated the theremin sound, but wanted greater control of pitch and attack, in contrast to the hand movements, which I described earlier, which is really difficult. Most famously, Tanner played the Electro Theremin on three songs from the Beach Boys, I Just Wasn't Made for These Times, Good Vibrations, and Wild Honey. Tanner's prototype Electro Theremin appears to have been the only one made. In 1999, Tom Polk built a replica of the original Electro Theremin for Brian Wilson's solo tour of that year. Polk called the instrument the Tannerin in honor of the original creator and performer. So there you've got more information than you ever thought possible on a theremin and now called the Tannerin. So let's go play this on the Nord Stage 3 and see how we can imitate it. Okay, let's set this up on the Nord Stage 3. You can start with an empty sound here or an empty program if you want. And uh, that's probably the easiest thing to do. But if you're not using an empty program, make sure that you turn on your synth engine and then push the shift button and do a sound initialize called sound init. Mine happens to be under the unison button up here. And then push OK. That'll clear out the synth engine and start you from scratch. All right, you do want the classic sine wave. So assign it to the classic. Make sure it's on sine. And then start playing it. You'll already hear. It sounds like the properties of what we're talking about here. Then the next thing you want to do is turn on the mono mode and put about a glide of about 2.0. That'll give you that portamento sound where the notes slide back and forth into each other. Then let's put on some reverb. I like to do a stage one reverb on this and then the dry wet settings at about a 5.0. And go ahead and put on the bright setting. I'll hold the shift button and put on the bright setting. Now might be a good time to save your sound, so let's do that. I'll hold the shift button and push the store button. 
and then we'll name this, I'll just call this uh, good, just for brevity's sake here. So G O O D. And the rest of this is good to go. And then I'll just throw a category on here, which will definitely be a synth category. There we go. And then push store and store again, and that will give you the good. I happen to have mine on M31. So there it is. Now that's most of it. There's only one more thing we need, a couple more things we need. What I also like to do is give it a little bit of a um, bite. So I'm going to change the oscillator configuration and go to a mount where the configuration is shape. I want to shape this classic sine wave just a touch. And I want to add about a 10% to it just to give it a little bit more bite. Then, what about the vibrato part, that, that wavery part? Let's imitate that. So we're going to be using the vibrato portion of the synth engine, if you will. And you've got a several different choices on how you can approach this. You can just put on de uh, the delay one vibrato if you want. Now that's the easiest one. Uh, because you don't have to really work for it. You just push it and the vibrato takes care of itself. Um, you could also use the wheel, which is my personal favorite, because then you have really full control over the vibrato, because not every note seems to be vibrato on the performance of it when you hear it on the album. Now, if you're going to use the wheel, uh, that's fine. And then I'm also adjusting the rate. So to get into the rate of the vibrato, you actually have to go into your sound settings here under the program area. So I'm going to hold the shift button and push sound. And uh, that's going to be, what is it, the third page in. And I'm putting my rate at about a 6.2, which may not be the default, but it's pretty quick. And then if you are using the wheel, the amount really doesn't matter because the wheel is going to dictate the amount. So that's it for that. So let's listen to that. Now I'm going to invoke my wheel here. See that? Now I'll have control over the vibrato. And I think that's it. I've got the reverb, I've got the shape of the classic sine wave, I've got it in mono mode, glide at 2.0, and then the vibrato rate under the system settings, dictated by the wheel. So let's play along with the album and see what it sounds like. Now if you do decide to play along with the original album, please note the tuning. It's not exactly 440, so take a look at my settings here. You can adjust your settings under the system area of the Nord keyboard. Here we go. And there you have it. I started when I was a child. Actually, when, when, I, when I was a little eight-year-old kid, my, mom, my, my, dad, my dad and mom took me over to the, their friend's house who had a theremin, right? And the guy was playing it, and I was scared to death of that sound. It really frightened me a lot. I, I got, really got scared. You know, I, I, I didn't want to hear that sound, you know? That theremin sound, that... You know, that sound. I had no idea that it would be a hit record. I, we had thought we weren't even going to release it because it was so bizarre. It was we such a, a cello and a theremin. Yeah, it was. It was a bizarre record. Our company, our, our record company, said Capitol Records was. Uh, that's too long. They said it's too long. It was three. It was three three thirty five. You know, the the, t the time on it was three minutes and thirty five seconds. The company said our company, our uh, Capitol Records said I we we we, we were going to go with Help Me Rhonda. No wait, what was the record that you with Barbara Ann or something like that? They wanted to release Barbara Ann. We said, no, let me logically convince you that this record, we didn't think, and then after we had gotten pe people over to the, uh, you know, over to our houses listening, people are flipping, they're going, whoo, that's a great record, man. And I said, but our company doesn't want to release it. Uh, and they said, well, you shouldn't listen to your company, force them to put it out, you know? And the record went out and went to number one in the nation, in the whole nation. And all because of that theremin in the, in, in the cello. Gotta keep those loving good Vibrations are happening with 